Alistair Ford, and my herbicide is Garlon 4. And this, like a lot of herbicides, is a product of Dow AgroScience. And this is just a little quote from Dow, and it's basically for the control of woody plants and herbaceous broadleaf weeds, uh, which, is in, which includes forests and the established and maintenance of wildlife openings. This active ingredient is triclopyr. Am I pronouncing that right? Triclopyr. Yeah, we call it triclopyr is what I say is not okay. the right way, but everybody out there, all the old country folks and everybody says triclopyr. Okay. So in that down in the red, that's just kind of a way to easy way to pronounce it. Um, and basically, this creates a synthetic auxin. Auxin. Um, it, ca it causes uncontrolled and disorganized growth in the plant, leading to death. Which it just tries to grow too fast and doesn't, and it just can't keep up and eventually kills itself. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, one other thing. This has a compared to Garlon 3A. It basically has a higher percentage of triclopyr in it. A um, couple benefits. I'm not going to read them all. It's a non-petroleum based plant uh, derived from seed oil solvent, which reduces the environmental impact. Um, it controls a lot of woody species. I mean, there's a whole whole list, and we'll get into that a little more. Um, you can work year round. Um, that's another benefit, and it is packaged in easy to use two and a half gallon containers and thirty gallon plastic drums, depending on the on what, okay, depending on uh, the job. And another pretty cool thing I thought was it's available in returnable, um, refillable containers, so you can get one and go back and have it refilled. The statement is caution on it, which a lot are, which uh, eye irritation, harmful if you drink it, just pretty standard stuff. Frequent contact and get an allergic reaction, but you should be all right if you get it on you and wash it off pretty soon. Um, yeah, wash after handling, which I think would be pretty obvious. Uh, PPE is pretty basic stuff, no respirator or anything like that, just long sleeve shirt, uh, chemical resistant gloves. Shoes and socks. Um, all that, that picture's not very clear. But just basic stuff. It is a non restrictive herbicide. I think they all, I wasn't here for all the presentations, but all of them so far have been non restrictive. Is that right? You have no restricted use. Okay. Um, it's forestry uses, site prep, and release. And I kind of, I didn't see this under a site prep or release, but what I've heard of people using it for is basically individual tree culling and maintenance. Just, <coughs> I guess you could call it, uh, well it's not really site prep or release. We've, we've gone out and, you know, there'll be an on-site landowner lives on the site and, you know, a logger will come in and bring in some kind of invasive species and, you know, he doesn't want it there. So it's not affecting the actual forestry, any planted trees or anything like that. But we can go ahead and knock that back and kill it for them with that. Just kind of site maintenance. <clears throat> um, I just put a few. There's a, I mean, there's a whole list of species controlled. And again, it's grasses, weeds, trees, hardwoods, everything. Um, maples. And this is kind of what you can picture in a site that's starting to get overtaken um, with the ma maples, oaks, poplar, and sweet gum. I think everybody can kind of picture a site that's overrun with that. No, you can't, Jake. <laughs> uh, mixing, you can mix, you mix it with water for foliar treatments, and you also add a surfactant um, such as methylated or ethylated seed oil. And for <clears throat> bark or cut stump applications, you mix it with an oil. But the oil does require uh, agitation to form a solution. And this is just kind of, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but this is from the SAF dictionary. Um, site preparation includes chemical spraying to create microclimates that are conducive to establishment and growth of whatever species you're trying to create. And going 
Mode 4 works excellent, excellent for that. <coughs> Playback period, uh, I had, I'm going to read this quote directly because I couldn't completely remember it with, with the numbers and rates, but conference plan is sooner, sooner than one month after treatment with Garlon 4 at less than four quarts per acre or sooner than two months after treatment at four to six quarts per acre may be injured. And that's a direct quote from the label. So you just gotta be careful with your plant back period and know when it was sprayed and take note or have a hat plan and just follow all the directions. This is a site that was, um, Garland 4 was used in the mixture of herbicide to site prep and as you can see it looks really good there's no I mean there's no uh, hardwood competition out there it looks really clean and looks like it was probably pretty easy to go back in there and plant too without having to fight through a bunch of stuff and this is broadcast applications uh, can be done from the ground or airily uh, for site prep or release um, broadcast does have the maximum amount of coverage and highest producti productivity. Aerial broadcast is, I don't know anybody or if you would use a airplane or a plane for aerial or not, but this in the, on the label it said only use a helicopter. Do people use planes? Not much. Not okay. very much. Okay, but it specifically said only to use a helicopter for and aerial, you know, you can uh, just make sure you have suitable drift control and droplet size, boom length. And pilots are really good at not making too many gaps or keeping it out of sensitive areas. And there is one, there is uh, a specific sensitive area that we'll get to with Garland. And for aerial, you can use 10 to 30 gallons of mixture per acre, and it's definitely cheaper than broadcast uh, ground applications. Just a helicopter spray. Ground broadcast, you can use a skitter, uh, multi person crews walking spread out spraying with backpack sprayers. It's more costly to get everybody out there and uh, have boots on the ground doing the work. You, do, you can uh, worry less about wind drift during, uh, if you're on the ground. Just be sure to calibrate your equipment and get uniform coverage. It's a piece of equipment running through spraying. Used for release, uh, helicopter, skitter, backpack sprayer. Use broadcast foliar applications or directed foliar spray. One and a half to three quarts per acre or four percent to twenty percent solution in water. And you can do the release in late summer or early fall after confer buds harden and prior to fall coloration. Full basil, uh, we all went over the different application types, but again, it stems up to six inches DBH, and you want to completely wet the lower 12 to 20 inches of stem on all sides. And it can be used up with rates up to eight quarts per acre. And like, with, like I said with Garland, you can spray in any time of the year, including winter except if snow or ice or some kind of water, some, if there's, for some reason you can't get to the ground line, you don't want to do that. And I don't think we have a whole lot of snow to worry about around here. But if you were to go somewhere with a lot of snow, you can't use it while that's on the ground. <coughs> Basil bark application, pretty standard. Thin line. Uh, as for like groups of trees, if you've got some sprouts and they're all kind of coming out, you can walk by and hit one side of each one, less than six inches DBH, and that's another good for conifer release. And you want to do this application about six weeks prior to hardwood leaf expansion, <coughs> all the way through two weeks after leaf expansion, so you've got a little time to play with there. That's a uh, Example of that guy going through and just hitting one side of each. That was blurry. Direct foliar, you can use one to eight quarts per acre, weeds or woody plants. Um, you will use a higher range for woody plants rather than uh, weeds. <clears throat> you want to 
want to do it in the growing season for woody plants. And you can damage pines during times of drought. So you just want to watch out. Watch out for that. And apply garlic for in a 2 to 4% water mixture. And you want to wet leaves to saturation, but not, you'd be wasting herbicide if you just over spray or, and it's illegal to over spray or over apply. Yeah, just doing a foliar application. Just running through, hitting the leaves and going. And this is what I was talking about, individual cull tree. Um, if you use the kill the cull for, so I just kind of use the word housekeeping around the site if the landowner is just wants a certain tree gone. It'll keep that from sprouting back up. You can cut that and cut stump. Um, that's another application method. Uh, you use it to control re-sprouting. Backpack sprayer, it's pretty straightforward. Cut the tree down, spray the stump. Uh, all the way including the cambium. It's another one you can do any time of year, including winter. Um, you use an oil mixture, and it again requires agitation. And you can spray the stump up to a month after cutting. So, uh, but I have read some stuff saying you may still, if you got a saw ready, you can go ahead and make a fresh cut and spray it after that if if it's been a little while. Uh, example of a cut stump. Just some of the environmental impact concerns. The professional contact I had was Brandon Price. He's a forester and does a lot of spraying, site prep, release, all that, um, or has people do it. But uh, he told me one thing. He was working on a job and they were down in the sand hills and they were going to. They were going to spray to get rid of some competition for some hardwoods. And the hardwoods and pines started to make root grafts, and they just sprayed like they normally do, but they ended up burning up a stand of pines. So because this soil, it went into the soil, it went down, and some just somehow ended up getting in and because of the root grafts, killed up, killed up the pines. And Another thing, it disrupts the trickle pier disrupts the plant growth process, and that's and that auxin is unique to plants, um, humans, animals. We don't have that, so it's unique to animals, and it's I mean it's unique to plants, and it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt us if ingested. I mean, I wouldn't recommend drinking a whole gallon of it, but if you get a little in there, it's not gonna. Uh, and that leads me to the next one. It passes through animal systems without being absorbed. And I'm assuming that's the same thing. I mean, it goes through goes through them without being absorbed at a reasonable amount. If they go through and drink a whole bottle, they'll probably probably won't be too good for them. It uh, is not classified to cause cancer in humans. And like most of these, you want to avoid the area until it dries. It is broken down by soil microorganisms. And another impact and environmental issue is you want to maintain spray drift control if you're applying aerially. But uh, Garland 4, you do not want to get it in open, uh, you do not want to get it in water. Um, one big thing, it brought up trout. It was dangerous to trout in uh, mountain streams. Didn't see anything about any other types of fish, or but it specifically said trout. And if you're going to be in a wet area, you probably want to research Garland 3A. Um, it's a low, Garland 3 I believe is a lower uh, percent of triclopyr, so it's, but with that you get a lower, um, it's less effective for killing the species you want to kill, so you just got to kind of know where you're at and what you're trying to accomplish and just think about it. Storage and disposal. You want to keep it above 28 degrees, or and you still want to agitate it for use. I'm sure if it's close to that number, um, can be disposed. You want to dispose of it on site or an approved waste facility. And I thought this was pretty cool. Um, the refillable container. Uh, the person refilling it is responsible for cleaning it and getting it ready to give it back to you. 
The non-refillable container is triple rinse and recycle, and definitely recycle. I know um, I don't know how a lot of people get rid of the plastic containers, but I'm sure it's they don't always get rid of it. And plastic's a pretty big issue. I'm not a hippie or anything, but recycle it. And takeaways: um, basically, garlic can be used site prep, release, and many different application methods so it's pretty well used or well liked by land managers um, whether it's for planting pines or wildlife just a variety of different things like I said the oxen the synthetic oxen is what kills the plant disrupting the plant growth it's got a fairly uh, a pretty low environmental impact not a whole lot of problems with it and depending on your project and where you're at it can be used year-round like I said, site prep and release, always use caution if you're going to use it. Just be smart about it. Pair a hat plan, and it is broken down by soil microorganisms. These are my work cited. Uh, a lot of my, most of my info came from just the Garland label, um, the Dow website, the course pack that we all received, uh, my professional contact, and another leaflet about the um, utility lines. That's another big thing it's used for is cleaning out lines. And that is just a picture of what you can hope to accomplish by getting a good site prep and having some real good growth in the first couple of years of planted pine. And that's it. Anybody have any questions about it? This is the blackberry. Yeah, yeah. I'll, that, uh, I've got a complete list of species it controls, but uh, it controls like everything. Any kind of mess that you're in, and fine stand or anywhere. You read on your label there. Your garland kills the grasses. It should, I believe so. Am I wrong? Sure about uh -huh. yours. Well, they've changed a bunch. I thought a bunch had changed in the past few years. That's what I got. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the things you just said, y'all going to get this down. Right away come to use this. And the reason why they use it is they don't want to kill the grasses. They want to kill the wood vegetation. Well, environmentalists got upset about them putting holes in there putting that harsh oil in there so they start going with the methylated seed oil. So they got away from it and now I'm wondering if they have it now I don't now if I'm wondering if they got trouble with the grasses and they don't care or what. But that was one thing that made the right way company use it because they don't mind grass on the ground. They don't mind driving the grass, they just don't want trees on the ground. Okay.